Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a podcast named Tim, a father and son movie review podcast. This week we are doing Point Break and American Graffiti, uh, some nice summer movies to, to kick off the, the summer. Uh, and uh, we're available everywhere podcasts are, so please leave a rating and review on your audio platform of choice. Of course, that means if you have iTunes or Stitcher, uh, Spotify, Anchor, CastBox, etc., we're also on the YouTube so if you're uh, on there, type in a little podcast name, Tim. We got movie reviews, bonus reviews other than just these, uh, Star Wars books. We're doing Bad Batch reviews, Power Ranger reviews, and other things as well. Uh, we have a website, podcastnametim.com. You can go look at every single movie we've ever reviewed. Click on the movie poster and listen to our thoughts on that film. We've reviewed over 400 movies, I believe. And uh, websites, let's see, oh, social media, podcast named Tim. You can look us up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I think that's all my marks. I am Zach. Dad, how are you today? Good, sir. Fantastic. 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 It's good to be back. Good to be back. I had a week of vacation. That is, the, I just. Me too. Yeah. Um, I realized uh, yesterday, I think. It is the longest I have not worked in nine years. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> one little my, week? One little week. My, my honeymoon was pretty short. So uh, this is the longest I have gone without working in nine years, almost a decade. So That's depressing. It, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure Monday when I go back, I'll be like, what do I do again? <laughs> What, uh, no, the but, complete opposite approach. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Well, what else have you watched other than these lovely movies? <laughs> you know the answer to that. I know the answer. I kind of started watching The Office again. Okay. What viewing uh, is this? Two, three, or four. Okay. I can't remember. Okay. But it's not one that I normally. I have not started watching it. Um, like individually, like you know, like a Seinfeld, like when yeah. I just stop and watch one with his dog. Yeah. Every time I've watched them, it's been uh, the series. And I thought I would just watch because it was kind of in the middle of things. I had finished Hannibal and I didn't really have anything else, so I thought I'd just put it on for. I had a couple days uh, vacation left. Right. And, right. Uh, yeah, but now I'm halfway through season five and. I haven't stopped it yet. Can you stop? It's addicting. It's it's just hilarious. The show's great. Well, I watched a lot. Um, when we last spoke, I was midway through my rewatch of the original Star Wars trilogy. I completed that. I, I have not moved Return of the Jedi above New Hope yet, but it has definitely edged a lot closer. Um, mainly because I think... I think the last battle sequence with Luke in the throne room... I think that's the best, the best part of the original trilogy overall. Um, it's it is it's a satisfying ending, you know, unlike other Star Wars trilogies. Um, but uh, I watched that. I watched a lot of movies actually. I was going through my notes here. Uh, a lot of these we are going to be having reviews coming to the channel for. Uh, but I'll go ahead. I watched the. Let's see. I watched The Lorax. I never saw that. I thought, while having a very good message, it was a little on the nose. And I think I commented to you that I thought Fern Gully was a little more subtle <laughs> in, in its environmental messaging. Right, right. What about um, the I did, B movie? The B movie I watched? No, the oh. B movie. Yeah, but the B movie had like a weird appeal to it because it was Jerry Seinfeld. What's with the flowers and pollination? Um, so I watched the little Rex. It was okay. I like the one song about kind of the evils of big business, but again, it was on the nose. But at that point, it felt like a parody. What I didn't get about the movie, and maybe you can explain this to me. I'm sure you've seen it a couple of times. Why didn't the guy, the the onceler, why didn't he just plant more trees? Like any business that normally cuts down trees does. It's, you know, why didn't we just 
<laughs> hired the people to go in and get a zombie head instead of pretending that they had to go in and get money out the vault. Money's money. I'm going to give you $5 million. Go get a zombie head. Right. It would have been much easier than go get a thing out of a safe. Yeah. While this one guy sneaks in with you and gets a zombie head. You know, I don't... I don't think you've told me your thoughts on Army of the Dead. You've messaged me, but what overall, what did you... That's all we talked about last week. I know. We, you were going to watch it. Uh, it, it, wasn't, it. Wasn't, it wasn't good. Zack Schneider just thinks that everything that pops in his head needs to go on film. And it doesn't. He, he needs a really good editor, and he needs people around him to go, dude, two hours is about all we need. Um, it's this, this long... And a like a long battle scene mm-hmm. or a long something that means something to the mm-hmm. movie is mm-hmm. acceptable. Mm-hmm. But when you throw in something that just makes no, that doesn't change the course of the movie at all, right? And make it twenty minutes too long, then you're just you're just a bad filmmaker. Sorry, I know people love some people love this movie. I, and okay. I like that article you sent me because it's so funny that the very first thing they complained about was the first thing I said. The opening was awesome. The, mo- the opening was great. Loved the, loved the Elvis theme. It made you feel Vegas. It, yeah. it was shot cool. And I thought I w- it got me in the mood for a movie. I thought I was going to get to see a good movie. And then yeah. it just went. <laughs> yeah, the opening was amazing. I I did not realize this until I watched uh, a review of it. Did you know about the reshoots? No, I had not. So, what's her name? Tig? Is that her name? Yeah. She was not in the movie originally. That's what I heard. They filmed an entire film with a guy, I don't remember who what his name is, he got accused of some sexual assault, something or another, and oh, so, uh, what's his name? Is it? Uh, I, I go ahead. I know. I, know, I, I think, think it's I know the guy know. from from New Girl, maybe. Oh, maybe. I thought it was that. Uh, geez, I can't think of the guy's name. Go on. I'll but go. anyway, so they filmed all the whole movie with him in it. All of her scenes where they shot her is just her in a green screen, and then they right. just edited her in. And I thought they did a really good job of hiding that. They did, because I was very confused until I kind of heard that. Yeah. Because I had heard, I don't know if it was him or her, had made a comment that he was never on screen with her. Yeah. He had never filmed a scene with her. Yeah. And then there they were right there at the fence yep. and right there here. And right there. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So I, I thought they did a good job hiding that. I liked the idea of Army of the Dead. Mashing together a heist movie and a zombie movie is a great idea. And I think it would be really cool. And I like... No, no, I'm with you on that, but that's not what it ended up being. And I liked the... I kind of liked the the lore. Like, the there's a hierarchy to the zombies. I, it's different, but I was like, all right, that's fine. There's enough zombie movies out there at this point where you can play around with it a little bit. I like that idea... I have to ask, what is Zack Snyder's fascination with zombie babies? <laughs> I don't know. He's done two zombie movies. There have been zombie babies, babies in both of them. And the They're other really one, creepy. Zombie babies are really creepy. They are really creepy. But I, the other one was better. Because, I mean, I remember, I can, I can close my eyes and see that scene from the 2004 uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. That was a great scene. Um, I didn't understand the whole premise of the movie, to be honest. I didn't really understand the people living outside of Vegas. They were quarantined. They wouldn't let them go because they thought they might have the zombie disease. Okay, but it seemed like there were several levels of that. Because those where Batista was traveled to the outer ring. Yeah. But why are those people in the outer ring living that close? And why were there people that actually were? Why did you want to go in there? I, I, my, what I gathered from it, people were going in to try and steal money so they could pay off officials so they could leave the quarantine zone. 
That's dumb. They were trying to bribe their way out of the quarantine zone by right. going. Yeah, yeah, that that was, like that was made. I don't know. I didn't really understand that whole setup. Yeah. Um, I watched John Wick Chapter 2. Not as good as the first one. Um, the first one, but I mean, the first one's like instant classic level. This was still a above average right. action film for sure. Um, I thought it missed a lot just with the first movie had all of that emotional just attachment with the dog and the wife. Right. And this one, they they played around with it a little bit, but that that missing, I think, lowered the film. But I did like the lore that we built on with all the different continental stuff and everything else. And I'm fascinated to see Chapter 3, given the fact that he is now excommunicado and how that's going to work. But, and they're making four. And they're making right four, which Donnie Yen has now been signed up to be on the I cast. I like the way it, it just continues right on, too. Um, yeah. It's not a ten years later, five years later, yeah. here's something. It just it picks up right where you left yeah. off. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was really good. I actually thought some of the fight scenes with Common were, were really well done. I was impressed. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, and uh, But, yeah, not, not, not as good as the first, certainly. Um, and then I watched, last night, I watched The Unbeaten 28, which is a bad kung fu movie that had potential. It, it really did. Uh, it just... It, it, it hit a lot of the tropes you need to hit. You know, the Wu Tang. Schneider directed. <laughs> no, it was a, t- a Taiwanese film. Um, so I don't think John Cena's seen it. But um, <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it hit a lot of the, you know, the tropes. The, you know, the Wu Tang clan was slaughtered and the young kid that survived has to be trained so he can get the revenge. And he had to go to like this really cool temple to pass these different obstacles in order to get a manual to learn like super Kung Fu. And a lot of the scenes in it were really cool. Like they were like, there were like these stone golems in it that he had to fight. And, uh, they were like little, like a silk bridge. You had to figure out how to manipulate around and jump across. And there was a scene where it was like all completely red with like red drapes and red and black drapes, and there was like a devil-looking golem. I was like, this should be like a horror film in some respects. But it was weird because he'd go to the temple, he'd get his butt whooped, and then he'd go back to his place and then kind of like save his progress and come back and keep it out. It, just, it kind of had like a weird a weird vibe with that. It had some cool weapons too and some good life. It just – it was structured weird and, 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 and edited really poorly. But I, I think honestly someone should play around with some of the elements in that. But uh, it, was, it was really cool. So that's what I watched. Like I said, I watched a lot. So, See that? Yeah, I watched a lot. And I, well, started I, had, I had catch up to do. I had to, the wife was gone for a week, so I had to catch up on all our all our shows. So and I st- started reading a new book, <laughs> the, the Courtship of Princess Leia, which is a Legend Star Wars book. <clears throat> it is fascinating to see how different. The Disney verses to the Legends verse, and Disney does a lot of things right because I don't think that they they're the the Disney stories are much safer as far as they don't really do crazy things. And in Legends, you can just make up whatever you want to make up, but I don't think they do a, as good of a job in actually writing the actual characters. Uh, and so it's kind of a I don't know. It's 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 a crazy story so far. I'm about halfway through. A review for that coming soon. Um, but let's go ahead and get into our movies. Uh, we're gonna start with Point Break. I figured. And uh, but before we do that, let's take a quick moment to pause and hear a word from our sponsor. Point Break, the original, <laughs> came out in 1991. R rating, two hour and two minute runtime, has a 7.3 on IMDb. On the uh, Rotten Tomato meter, it has a 70, I believe. Yep, and a 79 from the audience score. Um, of course, stars Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze. I did not know Gary Busey was in this film, or the John McGlinty. McGlinty? Is that his man? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I did not know either one of them were in this film, and obviously they're always both fantastic. Um, basically, there's a undercover FBI agent, and he's tracking down some surfer dudes who happen to be bank robbers. Um, this was your selection, I believe, for the week. No, this is mine. That's right, this was mine, because I had never seen Point Break. 
Um, what did you think of your most recent viewing Point Break? Saw it in the theater, saw it sometime on video, saw it this time, loved it every time. I like this movie. It's just, you know, simple. I'm doing it. That's crazy. It, Why do you I, like this movie? I, 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 I had totally forgotten Gary Busey was in it too, though. <laughs> when, he, when he popped up, I was like, oh, geez, I forgot about that. And I had forgotten the lead singer, Red Hot Chili Peppers, was in it. But, I don't think I picked uh, up on that either. The, the guy, yeah, the guy got his foot blown off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that you say that, that makes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, and um, yeah, again, I mean, I don't know why they made a remake. I'm not sure what the remake did. I almost thought about watching it. I just kind of was curious. So you've never seen it? No. Okay, okay. Uh, it was one of those ones that I could have recalled. There's just no reason to, <laughs> yeah. no reason to watch that. Um, was it a fantastic movie? No. Oscar winner? No. Had it been done a million times, yeah. They just put some surfers out there. Um, I like the end. Yeah, I have some thoughts on the ending, though. I have a better um, ending. Yeah, I mean, I would have taken his ass to jail. Oh, no, I have a better ending. I would have I would have denied him that last, that last ride. Oh, no, that's not what the movie was trying to say. They, there should have been a different ending. Well, then I will turn it over to you, because I really don't have, I, I don't have a whole lot of critique on it, because I, I like the movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, like you said, it's 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 dumb. Turn off your brain. Action film. There's a you know a forced love plot as always. There's a uh, two just machismo dudes who want to uh, are in a, a pissing contest to see who's more manly in some respects. Although it has a different vibe because of the the surfer element and the the adrenaline rush uh, aspect. Uh, I thought. It was interesting because this is one of the first action films that Keanu Reeves was in. So this is the beginning of – this is before Speed. So it's like this right. and then you know Speed and then he kind of – The Matrix and he starts to become this action star. Well, let me ask something before you get too far. Yes. Because you said force relationship. Because, yeah, I wish they'd have totally taken the force relationship out. Yeah. And yeah. spent more time with Patrick mm-hmm. Swayze and Keanu Reeves yes. together and had, yes. had more of it. Do you think the reveal was too soon? Did you did you want the, the them not knowing each other longer, or did you like the cat and mouse better? I wanted I wanted them to bond more, right. and I actually was I was thinking, oh Patrick Swayze is gonna think there was two ways this was going. Either one, he absolutely from the beginning knows he's a cop, or he's gonna think he's one of them, and he's gonna try and recruit him for a job. And I thought that's where it was going to go. Um, uh, I mean, he ended up doing a job with them in the end, but I thought that he was going to try to recruit them, and he was going to have to go undercover do a job with them. Right. But um, I, yeah, I, I, it was a little early, and I would have liked more, like I said, more time because the big moment of the movie, of course, is you know Keanu Reeves shooting the gun up in the air and yelling. That right. moment would have meant more had they had more screen time together. Yeah, exactly. Right. And and Patrick Swayze was the best part of the film. Because his character was so unique and kind of this cult leader in some respects, and uh, man. and it would have been really cool just to see him uh, more and and learn more about that character. Gotcha. But I love the ex presidents, the concept, the yeah, look, yeah, yeah. the execution of it, the lines it was able to, to to give them. That whole concept was great, um, um, and I love. But as far as Keanu Reeves, you can see he's he's still morphing into the Keanu Reeves we would see later. He's not quite there. He's still got a little Bill and Ted, right. which is actually funny because there are times where he's playing the straight laced cop, where he's 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 kind of getting there. Right. But then there's time when he's he's like trying to do Surfer Dude, yeah. and I'm like, you look like Keanu Reeves trying to play Keanu Reeves. Right. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, and so that was that was interesting to see. Um, I but for endings, so you know the whole movie was Patrick Swayze is you know this guy who just loves adrenaline, adrenaline and he, junkie, adrenaline junkie, and Keanu Reeves is just like him, and they're kind of bonding over this weird adrenaline rush together, even though they're kind of enemies. The end of the movie should have been him saying. Uh, let me ride. Let me ride this wave. And Keanu should have said, 
I'm coming with you. They should have gone out there and rode together. I guess, yeah, that would have been all right. That would have been, like, you're not going without me. And then I'll take you in but after. you know what we would have got had we got that? What? We would have got the crashing back in the shore, standing up, and Keanu Reeves slapping the cuffs on him in the surf. Oh, no, see, I thought we were going <laughs> to see. The way I had it in my mind was, because I, I the whole time me and, me and Allison were watching it, and she enjoyed it. She likes dumb action films. And we're watching it, and we're just, you know, I'm like, I'm going to ride with you, bro. Um, and <laughs> I was waiting for them to ride. I thought Keanu was going to, they were both going to crash. Keanu was going to wash ashore. And then you weren't going to see, you know, Patrick right. would have been lost. That's how I would have, that's how I would have booked it. And then he showed up as a, as a bounty hunter. I mean, uh, as a bouncer in the roadhouse. That's right. Uh, would have been great. But yeah, I, um, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of dumb fun. And I, I don't have too many critiques. I really liked the chase scene that they had. I thought that was really well shot. I did not realize who directed this and the other films they had done. Who's that? Uh, Catherine Bigelow, who, who directed the Academy Award winning Hurt Locker and also directed Zero Dark Thirty. Mm-hmm. So I did not realize that. Um, there was a lot of weird and interesting trivia about this film. Did you know this is the second film that Keanu Reeves has played? One of two films where Keanu Reeves has played a ex-quarterback from Ohio State. The replacements? The replacements the other one. So he's played an Ohio State quarterback quarterback. twice. Um, Apparently, Patrick Swayze was super big into skydiving. Oh, yeah. Did not know that. Not often did it. Um, there what was there was other ones. Uh, apparently refused to do a lot of, you know, he refused to let people do a lot of his surf scenes. He did break some ribs. Um, I thought it was interesting that Keanu also did a lot of the, because um, you know, with the John Wick stuff, they have all those videos of him out there like training, like right. getting into it and really doing it. Same thing here. Went and went and hung out with some FBI agents in Los Angeles. Went and practiced with some UCLA quarterback coaches. I mean, he's 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 always getting into it. He's method, man. He's yeah, he's method. Um, and then some of the not interesting... method man, like as in uh, rap method man. Yeah. But, okay. Not that method man. Yeah. What do you what do you think of the name Johnny Utah? Yeah, that was kind of weird. That's what I thought too. Yeah. Johnny Utah. It felt like a placeholder. <laughs> It was a little strange. <laughs> um, of course, the presidents die in the order of their office that they were in. Um, did you notice? Uh, so the beach where they filmed the football scene is the same beach where they filmed the soccer game and the Karate Kid. Uh-huh. So there you go. And uh, let's see, there was a couple other people that I think were interested in doing this film. Uh, Willem Dafoe, I believe. Uh, oh, Matthew Broderick was originally... Matthew Broderick was offered the role of Johnny Utah. No. That would have been terrible. That would uh, have been terrible. Other people who auditioned. Johnny Depp. Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen could have pulled it off. Willem yeah. Dafoe and Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer could have also pulled it off. But it should have been Keanu. It's no, I don't. I'm not going to go with Val Kilmer because he reminds me of the other side, and he would have been a surfer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, but yeah, Matthew Broderick would have been horrible. Willem Dafoe, I don't see. No. Charlie Sheen, I agree with. What was the other? Who's the other one? Uh, Johnny Depp. I mean, yeah, he could. He could have done it. He could. Well, I mean, if you're going to be a quarterback from Ohio State, you kind of have to have a certain build and, and look. Right. If you're going to be the straight lace, you know. True. Uh, but yeah, I, I I thought a solid flick, man. It's the second best movie about surfing I've ever seen. What was the first, Blue Crush? No, Surf Ninjas. <laughs> I knew where you were going to go. <laughs> you knew where I was going with that. <clears throat> oh, man. Also, I, I should say, I love the end where, uh, just because it was Keanu doing it, where he's like, Vio con Dios. 
<laughs> oh my god, that was pretty bad. Oh uh, yeah, good a good film, good film. Um, would never want to watch a remake of. Never what? Never would, would never watch a remake. See now I'm really curious because I want to know what they did. Did they change the ending? Did they change the characters? I don't know. I might I might actually peek at it and just see what they did, just so I can criticize it. You are a brave man. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and hop to your selection of the week, American Graffiti, which, of course, uh, came out in 1973, PG rating, one hour and 50-minute runtime, uh, written, directed by Mr. George Lucas, stars Richard Dreyfuss, Ron Howard, Paul Lamott, uh, who else? Cindy Williams. Cindy Williams, Mackenzie Phillips. Harrison Ford. Harrison, well, he's not starring in it. If Harrison Ford's on the screen, he's oh. he's starring. Um, has a, a cowboy hat wearing. That's right, because he didn't want to cut his hair. Um, a seven point four on IMDb, a ninety six on the Tomato Meter, and an eighty four from the audience, uh, and was nominated for five Oscars. Did not win anything, but was nominated for five. Um, I'll go first. I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, it was it was an interesting snapshot into a culture that I would have never known anything about as far as the riding around in the cars trying to pick right. up on the strip. Cruising. And I liked the Seinfeld-esque aspect of it where it was kind of a movie about nothing. It was just about guys hanging out. I, I thought that they all had interesting characters and character arcs. I loved Curtis. Richard Dreyfuss was, was great. Ron Howard was an ass for most of the movie, which was fun to see him in that kind of role. I liked Paul uh, Paul Lamott and his dynamic with uh, the younger girl and that relationship. And I liked the, you know, the nerd trying to play tough for the whole evening. I just liked all the characters, and I thought it was – you just it had just a, a chill flow to it, and by the end of the movie, I was satisfied. I I really enjoyed this. I was very surprised that George Lucas was able to pull off this because every obviously everyone thinks of him with Star Wars and THX, which is still in that sci-fi mold, and so for him to just do a a, a night out, you know, for people was and make it interesting. I thought it was really good. What'd you think? Well, <laughs> I get why at the time it was a hit because it definitely the people that were watching it were watching yeah. their childhood, their teenage yeah. years. You know, um, I mean, I have been I've been down in Virginia Beach, done the whole round and round and round and round, round, which you're not allowed to do. You know, they count you. And suppose they count you, and if you go around like five times, they can pull you. I never really understood that. I never got it. I don't get the whole. I don't. I'm not a car person, so I don't care about that. Yeah. I don't want to drive around. Can't meet women driving around. Get parked somewhere. Apparently, you can. <laughs> I guess in this place you could. Where was this, by the way? I think it was supposed to be somewhere like Modesta, something like Modesta, California. I don't know how I missed that. Um, Richard Dreyfus. I kind of liked his character, although it was kind of weird. It just wasn't entertaining. It just, I, I mean, did. the music, love the music. Oh, oh the music was fantastic. Love seeing the cars because I do like, I like, I like that the year of cars. I just couldn't really get into the. It was slow. Whole, yeah, I don't know. It was, it, it wasn't my cup of tea. Your cup of tea. I can, I, bag, I, it wasn't my bag. I, I get that. Going midway through it, I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm feeling this, but towards the end, I just I liked the kind of absurd nature of how this night devolved. <laughs> I mean, Curtis ends up hanging out with a bunch of greaser gangs, right. has to go do all this stuff, and right. um, you know, Ron Howard's in this existential crisis about what he wants to do with with his life, and I like the fact that him and Curtis switched their views on how to interpret life. Um, I did not like the screenshot at the end with, you know, oh, he did this, and then he right. did that. I didn't need that. The the ending was solid enough with Curtis getting on the plane. Right. 
him flying off. Which I thought um, was weird. I thought that, that in that era, most people did road trips to college. I didn't know we stuck our kid. Yeah, I guess it's some money there. That's somewhere. a good shot. I did not. And I know this, this, I mean, this happens in tons of movies of, of this era. And I don't know exactly why. I don't like seeing 40 year old people playing high school kids. <laughs> the, the, the leader of the, the gang. Oh, I yeah. Mean, was he on Social Security? Good God, that was just, that was very distracting. I don't know. I, I picked this movie because I'd never seen it. And maybe the reason I didn't really care for it is because I I never like to be told that I'm going to like a movie. <laughs> that this is something i got to watch. you got to watch American Fee. American Fee is not the best movie. Ever. So I already start out with a little, oh, yeah. But is it, and, and I don't know about this, but is it a revolutionary film? It is in some respects, but is it a revolutionary film in the in the aspect of, I don't think in the 60s and 50s they were making a lot of coming of age, end of summer, we're, we're going off to college. Like that became like a norm, but was that a, I mean, that wasn't a thing, right? I don't think there was plenty of those. Was there? Okay. I think it's, so. so I guess when I think of that era in the 50s and 60s, I think of, you know, B movies and war movies and definitely not musicals. like they were in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. But, but I'm saying, was it, was it because of the success of this? That it kind of like ushered in that genre, maybe that teenage, you know, crisis of who am I? <laughs> yeah, I just kept seeing the whole happy days. Who is Wolfman Jack, and why do I, why should I care about him? Wolfman Jack was a very, very, very popular DJ. He was the he was the Casey Kasem, the uh, Rick Dees of that mm-hmm. era. Okay. Um, this is the shortest I've ever seen his hair or his beard. Wolfman usually was had a big old beard, a huge yeah. beard with a with a white stripe down it. He did some other stuff. He just um, he did a lot of little guest appearances and things because his voice was just iconic. Um, he actually toned down his voice a little bit in this. He had a real graspy voice and the, the howl. And yeah, he was. Did you like that scene? Uh, where he was things. keeping the, where he was keeping the, the you know where where him and Curtis interact and he's trying to keep the curtain about who the Wolfman is. I like that. Yeah, it was alright. Like that. Okay. He had a he had a show. He had a late night show in the eighties, I think. Midnight special, it might have been called, mm-hmm. with Wolfman Jack and you know it just yeah he was just kind of. I'm not sure how long he was popular, but he, yeah, I knew Wolfman Jack pretty. I, I just liked that Curtis was on this weird mission for the night, where he's like, I just need to find this girl. That was it. That was the whole movie. Right. I need to find this girl. And so it just, I, I get what you're saying, because you're not wrong, but I don't know. I, it worked for me. I like Can't Hardly Wait better. Okay. They get to the party. He was looking for the girl all night, but it's good music. They stay at the party. They don't just cruise around. I just don't, I don't know. I was so well, I, I listened to an interview uh, from George Lucas, and uh, he had said that uh, that was the movie, that was the original idea of the movie. He's He was fascinated with, he called it the mating rituals of the 50s, about uh, riding, riding around in cars. And that's oh, what yeah. he made a movie about. <laughs> he said, I wanted to, you know, it was kind of dying out, and I just was fascinated by that idea. And, um, but, uh, I thought, so this movie I said was revolutionary in a variety of ways. Um, studios did not want to touch it because of the number of songs it would have required to purchase. Of course, Mr. Francis Ford Coppola, his buddy who had just got done making a little film called the Godfather, AKA probably the greatest film ever made. Um, he he gave he gave him his his blessing, and uh, that you know helped. Gave him the rub. Gave him the rub, and you know a lot of movies now do have a lot of more, you know, commercial background music in it. Oh yeah. Um, and that was you know not. Oh, the music was, was fantastic. I love the music. Yeah. Uh, also, do did you know the other way that this movie revolutionized the industry? No. 
So I did not realize that twice George Lucas has revolutionized credits in films. Of course, he revolutionized with Star Wars by putting the credits at the end of the movie because he said, I want to get to the action. In this movie, he didn't have enough movie money to pay his crew. And so he gave them screen credit in lieu of payment. Uh, before this, the, it was generally accepted that you, only the department heads would get screen credit. And it's now become, of course, stand, industry practice for everyone to get credit. Who's working well, you got on 20 minutes of credits now. That is because of George Lucas. You're welcome. Thank you, George. <laughs> but it's just, you know, he's just, this, these weird things. He just he found ways to make it. Key grip. Director of the key grip. Assistant to the key grip. That's that's because of George. The guy who wiped key grip's ass. Maybe that's why he realized that once he made Star Wars, he's like, I have to put these at the end. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, um, but yeah, I I I enjoyed it. Yeah, I had no way I'm going to say it's a horrendous movie. It just wasn't my thing. I'm sure it was fine. It just eh, I like the music. The story was fine. It just uh, just wasn't. Didn't do the thing for me. I would watch it again. Um, would you say, and they're obviously very, very different films, would you prefer this or THX? This. I agree. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I had a feeling you might say that. At least this had the good songs in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, I was actually out in my pool yesterday. My, you know, my little inflatable pool. Um, and I uh, was listening to the, the soundtrack while we were out there hanging out. So it was a good day. Okay. Well, I, I yeah, I enjoyed it. And um, and now, and there's so many uh, interesting connections with this film because obviously, you know, George Lucas and Harrison Ford and the Ron Howard would go on to, you know, do another Star Wars film. And was this before or after Happy Days? Before. Before, Okay. So you have all that kind of that. Being well, yeah, the, the diner in it even smells diner, which is yeah. I know. I think it was, like, was a chain then, wasn't it? Was I that a, was that a that might have been not just a, something you could buy into, not necessarily a chain, but you could buy the uh, right the rights to it. I'm thinking, so, I'm thinking that was. But no, I I uh, I liked it. I liked it. It was an interesting film. Arnold's, I watched it again. That's what it was. Arnold was never mind. It wasn't Mel's diner. It was Arnold's diner. Mel's diner was Alice. What was it from uh, the Looney Tunes? Eat at Dave's. I don't know. Joe's, Dave, Mel's. I don't know. It was in Albuquerque because you had to take a left turn. I think it was Joe's. And then you Eat ended at up in two. Jamunga. Wow, well, we we I've watched way too much television. And, yeah, I watched Scoob this morning, so my brain's rotted. I got you. Yeah. Um, well, let's go ahead. What, next week we are doing. Um, obviously, a lot of people do Christmas in July, and uh, so we're going to do a little Halloween in June. Uh, a little, all right. Or, you know, we're calling it. That's yeah, a little ha- Halloween in June. So little horror films. Uh, I'll let you go first. <laughs> Prime. Amazon Prime, got it. Eat locals. Eat locals. I'm already hoping for the best. Um, <laughs> so it has a Doctor Who connection. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I have a uh, little set of films here that I called cult classics that are digitally remastered. This is collection number two. We've watched one of these films already. Yeah. We watched Dementia 13. Um, which was it was interesting. Uh, there's another film on here that I've decided we're gonna f- watch called The Screaming Skull. The Screaming Skull. I don't know if it's available anywhere for free, but if not, I have the DVD here for you. Who is in The Screaming? Skull? I have no idea. I just read the synopsis and I was like, oh, that's interesting. It says. Um, Horror tale of a newly married husband and wife who find screaming human skulls around their house. The terror mounts when the ghost of the husband's first wife appears. Oh, dear. (laughs) Well, had I not, uh, had I been able to find a place for you to watch 
um, a movie without having to spend 20 bucks on I would have done Spiral. And what did you think of Spiral? I haven't watched it yet. Oh, you haven't? Okay. They watch it tonight. I'm either going to watch that tonight or um, uh, Quiet Place 2. I never saw the first one. Um, what? I never saw the first one. Dude. Uh, I saw Bird Box. It was satisfying enough. <laughs> Same gimmick. Jim and Skull, 1958. That is right. You got it. Yeah. John Hudson. Peggy. Yeah, I don't know any of these people. Um, it's it's a cult classic, sir. It says right here on the DVD. Oh, my fault. Yeah, it has a three, three on. It says uh, it's cult classic. Three point eight on the item. So. Um, here, here's what else. Here's what else is on this DVD. Are you ready? Uh, Frozen Alive from 1964, and Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter. Those, those are the four films that are on this DVD I bought from uh, from a secondhand store. It's part of the AMC Monster Fest collection. Here's the the first trivia: the cast members were paid one thousand dollars each plus a share of profits to be paid out later. However, American International never paid out any of these shares. <laughs> so I don't know if they didn't make anything, or they just said they didn't get any money. So, yeah. anyway. Part of the AMC Monster Fest. Oh. So. Well, if AMC showed it, it's got to be good. Got to be good. So. All right. Well, um, I am excited. To get watch his film. Back to John uh, Cena. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Who cares? A lot of people. All right. I don't know the. Yeah. I don't know the things going back and forth. I don't know what the situation is. Over. I don't know. Is Taiwan? A, are they still under China? Are they an independent country now? I don't know all that. Let me. I will give you the quick synopsis. <laughs> so. There was a government in China prior to Mao. Right. When Mao came and took over, that gov- those government leaders fled and went to Taiwan. Right. They said, we're the Republic of China. We're the real China. And that's, you know, crazy Mao people, China. Know all that. And that's been the contention from this point. They think they're... They think they're supposed to be the the true lineage of China, and China thinks it's China. Gotcha. I mean, it's here. Here's how. Here's one you probably never heard of. Is it the East Sea or the Sea of Japan? I actually have heard that. Do you, uh, do, you, do you know that that became a point of contention in the Commonwealth of Virginia? You, you told me that. I remember when that happened. There was a bill in in this in this great Commonwealth to decide what our textbooks were going to say. And there were foreign dignitaries that made it a point to come here. It was, I was like, again, who cares? <laughs> it's, it's some water. It's, it's, some, it's some water. If you want to call it this and you want to call it that, that's fine. But it is a point of contention. Although I think that's between Korea and Japan. Who is the first child born in the colonies? Virginia Dan. Very good. I learned that. I learned something. I you did. When you said that, I thought, oh, man, you know, they actually did. I'm pretty sure they taught us that. Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. Um, I probably didn't care. Um, I, I don't like American history. I don't think it's that interesting. It's, it's all right. I prefer world history. Yeah. Um, there's more to work with. Um, I actually like history up until the fall of the Roman Empire. And then I'm just like, ah, don't care. <laughs> All of this is uncivilized. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, there was a plague, there were some dirty people, there were some, some Vikings, some more dirty people, colonization, America. That's pretty much... <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so, um, fascinating. That, that took a weird turn. We've got a couple of Taiwanese films. I was going to pitch Or did we do a couple of Republic of China movies? I think they still call themselves Taiwan. I don't know. Yeah. My point was back to that. Why does John Cena have to apologize to anybody? Who cares? 
Why did he have to apologize? Yeah. Because the Chinese movie market makes lots of money and they don't want to piss off those people. It's all about the money. I got you. I'm, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same if reason. The answer is money. I'm good with it. It's the same reason Disney does stuff and everyone else. So they, how much is NBC going to buy WWE for? Well, WWE. $4 billion. Is WWE worth the same amount of money as Star Wars? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing four, four billion. Four billion. That's roughly the same as buying a sports team. Now, here's my problem. I don't understand why they want it. I would want it. Wrestling I, is in a decline. Right, but and it, I don't think it'll ever be popular. Like it, it's come back numerous times. Yeah. But with the new cult, cancel culture and the new things like that, I don't think it's ever going to be able to get to where it was before. And I don't see NBC. I don't think. Do they really know? They would. 